Hello and welcome to a new video on the String Metrics channel. In this video, I want to answer a couple of questions that I often get asked by people who want to buy a double bass, mostly people who buy a double bass for the first time. Buying a double bass is quite different than buying another kind of an instrument. Why is it so? The reason is that uh, with double basses, we don't have big brand names like you have for electric guitars, electric basses, or other kinds of instruments. So you can't really say, well, uh, just get the model XYZ from this or that brand and you're fine for a start. That doesn't apply to the double bass. Um, there are a lot of smaller companies or single makers who make the basses. There are also some bigger companies, but even there, it's difficult to say that, that this or that model is a good model to start with. Why? Because apart from the instrument itself, what's very, very important for the quality of a double bass is the setup of the double bass. So what do we mean with the setup of the bass? Well, the setup includes the action, the string action. So that's the height of the strings, which is determined by the height of the bridge but also by the height of the nut. Then, the shape and the evenness of the fingerboard, very important. Then, the positioning of the sound post, which you can see if you look through this F-hole here. Then, the bridge of the bass, and that includes the quality of the bridge, so the quality of the wood of the bridge, how is the shaping of the bridge, are the feet perfectly adapted to the curb of the top of the base? And is the bridge at the correct position and at the correct angle? This bridge here has adjusters, which is a cool thing, but you can also be absolutely fine if you don't have adjusters, if the setup of the bridge is well done. Then the string spacing. Also very important, the curve of the bridge. So. So this shape here, which has to correspond to the curve of the fingerboard up here. Then also the choice of the strings is part of the setup of the bass. And if we are talking about amplifying the bass, also the choice of the pickup and whether this pickup is correctly installed or not, that's also part of the setup. The thing is, there is not just one way of setting up a bass. Of course, parts of the choices are personal. Some players prefer a higher action, others prefer a lower action. But the setup also depends on the style of music that you want to play, so which techniques you're going to use. Each technique requires a slightly different setup of the bass. And also the choice of strings that you're going to use has an impact on the setup. For instance, strings with a lower tension can be played with a high, higher action and still be comfortable to play. What I want to say is that the setup of the bass is really, really, really important. Actually, when I play concerts and get a rental bass to play, because I can't take my bass to the gig, I prefer to get a bass that you would uh, describe as a student quality bass with a very good setup rather than getting a base made of fantastic woods that would have a bad setup. When you will start to look for a base, one of the first parameters that you will encounter is whether the base is made of carved wood or whether it's made of plywood or laminated wood. Actually, uh, talking about plywood and laminated wood, uh, I, for a long time I thought that it was the same thing and just yesterday I found out that there is a little difference when we're talking of, about plywood. The sheets of wood that are glued together have always the grain of the wood at an angle of 90 degrees to each other. And when we're talking about laminated wood, the grain is always in the same direction, so it's parallel grain. But to be honest, this is not so important, I think. Uh, when I'm talking about plywood or laminated wood, I mean the same category of bases. So you will quickly find out that the carved bases are the most expensive ones. So yes, 
a carved base is the real thing, it's the real deal. But that doesn't mean that a carved base is always better than a laminated or plywood base. Actually, there are also plywood bases out there that cost somewhere around uh, 3,000 euro or more, so real high-end plywood bases. And um, also among the more cheaper instruments you can find some really really good plywood bases. Actually this base here is an old plywood base and I just had it restorated by a base maker called Markus Desch and it turned out really fantastic. <laughs> For comparison, let me just play a couple of notes on this bass here, which is a carved bass. It's actually also a little, a little bit bigger than the plywood bass. It has the same strings on G and D, olive, pirastro olive. So let's listen. And I have one more card base here, which we can compare for fun. This one here now has a spiral core strings on, so metal strings and a lower action. So what do you think? In my opinion, I think that this plywood base can really keep up with the carved bases. Generally speaking, I would say that plywood bases mostly have a more mid-emphasized sound. Sometimes they sound a little boxy. They will often not be quite as loud as a good uh, carved wood base. And generally, the, the high end will be not as fine or, or precious sounding and also the low end will probably not be as, as fat and massive as on a carved base. Carved bases tend to have more open and full sound. One more interesting option are hybrid bases. These bases have a carved top, mostly made of spruce wood, and the rest of the base is made of plywood or laminated wood. This is a category kind of in between plywood and carved wood and their quality often gets really close to the quality of a fully carved base. So how can you recognize a plywood base? Well, if you look on the side, you will probably be able to see the sheets of wood right here or here on the back of the base. You can often recognize a plywood base just by looking at the top of the base. This is the plywood base, this is the carved base. On carved bases, you will always see the grain of the wood going straight vertically from one end of the top to the other end. Plywood bases sometimes also look like this, but very often you will see all sorts of different shapes, more curvy shapes. Sometimes it looks even like uh, the shape of, of slices of salmon. So that's another way of recognizing a plywood base. Plywood bases also have advantages. Plywood is generally more solid than normal wood, so with a plywood base you will rarely have problems with cracks. And that's also the reason why rockabilly bases who would jump on the base and so on uh, would always use plywood bases to do that. Weather changes won't affect a plywood base as much as a carved base. For some types of music and some types of situations, the more mid-emphasized sound of a plywood bass may work better than the more broad sound of a carved bass. Uh, especially, let's say, in situations where you play on big stages with a lot of amplification, maybe a plywood bass would work better. I mean, also here that's not a general rule, but you can consider this. The next thing that you will encounter is a figure telling you something about the size of the bases. So for instance, you will see in the description of the base that it's a three-quarter or four-quarter base. So what does this mean? 
In my experience, most players who play jazz or other pizzicato styles use three quarter basses, or maybe seven eighth basses. In classical orchestras, it's the opposite. You will very often see four quarter basses in orchestras. And that's also due to the fact that most orchestras use five string basses, and these basses are mostly four quarter basses. Three quarter basses are easier to travel around with, and the fact that they have a little less volume or low end than four quarter basses is mostly not that important since on most gigs you will have the bass amplified. One interesting thing is that there are no norms for the size of basses. It's very different from, let's say, violins. Uh, a violin always has the same string length, the same body sizes. Uh, with a bass, you will find all sorts of sizes, string lengths, uh, body sizes. And if it says that a bass is a three-quarter bass, that's just an approximate data. But you can say that uh, three-quarter basses will mostly have a string length of something between 103 centimeters to 107 or maybe 108 centimeters. So the average string length would be somewhere around 104 to 105 centimeters, which is exactly the fact here on this base. And that's somewhere around 41 inch, maybe just a tiny bit more. You will also encounter sizes like 7 eighths, so this is just in between 3 quarters and 4 quarter, or half bases or 1 quarter bases. Quarter bases or half bases are actually designed more for children or maybe smaller people or sm people who have really small hands. But on, a, on the professional scene you mostly only encounter sizes uh, from three quarters to four quarters. One more thing that you will see in the description of a bass is whether the bass has a D neck or an E flat neck. What does this mean? Well, it simply means that on a D neck, when your thumb gets to this position here, your index finger will play a D. And if this was a bass with an E flat neck, at this point here I would have an E flat on my index finger. So is one or the other type of neck better? No. These are just two different ways of building the neck of a double bass. That being said, as a player, you will get used to one or the other type of neck. I think personally that it's difficult to switch from one neck to the other. That's why I would recommend to take the type of neck that's the most popular. And in my experience, the D necks are more popular. And the reason why I say this is that as a bass player, every now and then you will be in a situation where you are going to have to play on a bass that's not your own bass. For instance, on a jam session, or because you play a concert where you have a rental bass and not your own bass. And since on these situations, the chances will be bigger that you will have to play on a bass with a D neck. That's why I think it's better to be used to that kind of a bass. Next question that I often hear is, should I aim for a used bass or should I get a new bass? Personally, I think there are good reasons to take a look at uh, older basses for the simple reason that the wood of a bass will develop over time. It will mostly shrink a little bit and if you get a new bass it may be in perfect condition on the day you buy it and sound great but maybe over the years there will be some changes on the wood that sometimes are positive changes but sometimes also negative so maybe you will have cracks coming up or maybe the sound will not be as nice at some point just because the wood alters and, and uh, maybe you will have some tensions in the construction of the base coming up. So I think that the base that's already a couple of years old has the advantage that it will mostly remain the way it is. Plus, 
older basses that have been played a lot will probably have developed their sound better. That's also a plus point for most older basses. Still, that doesn't mean that I don't recommend new basses. If you get a new bass from a quality bass maker who uses selected woods that have dried correctly over a couple of years, then you can get, of course, fantastic new basses. That brings us to the next point. Where should I go to buy a bass? I see basically three possibilities. Possibility number one, to go to a specialized bass shop. Possibility number two, go to a normal music store that sells also other instruments. And possibility number three, get your bass from private. So for instance, from somebody you would find on classified ads. So possibility number one, the bass shop. Bass shops are mostly held by bass makers who have a workshop and in my eyes that would be the most secure option because you get professional advice and if it's a bass shop with a good reputation you can be quite sure that you will get a bass that's in good shape and that has a good setup. You will probably also get a guarantee on your instrument. Still, you may also find a good bass at a normal music shop or on classified ads. And on classified ads, you will maybe also have the chance of finding a, a real bargain bass. But very often with these two options, you will have to have the bass set up. Maybe you will have to get some work done on the bass. So basically the price that you are going to pay for that bass is not the real end price, let's say. You will still have to put some money in it to get the bass in a good shape. One more problem is that some aspects of the quality of the bass can only be uh, seen or judged by persons who have really a lot of experience. There are even some points where you have to be an expert, so a, a bass maker, to see if, if they are okay or not. For instance, is everything inside the bass uh, correctly glued? Is the bass bar firmly glued or is it loose? Or I already had the case that I found a bass that seemed to be a bargain, but it turned out that, that some uh, worms had damaged the wood, so some parts of the wood had to be treated or renewed because of that. And these are things that, that you can't see that just like this. You have to look inside the bass and look with the eyes of an expert. In any of the three cases, if you are not an experienced player, I would definitely ask an experienced player to come along with you to help you find out if this bass is really an interesting option or not. Also, in many cases, it's a good idea to ask the seller if you can take the bass home for a couple of days to, get, to really get a feeling for the bass. I often did this when I bought some bases and it was okay for the seller. Maybe you can leave some kind of a security or make a contract. But buying a base is a very, very personal thing and you have to buy a base that suits you. And uh, you won't find out just in, in an hour if this base is the right base for you. Once you go to the seller and check the instrument, what are you looking for? Personally, the first thing I do is that I take a look at the instrument from all the sides. Um, I look what the fingerboard looks like. Is it a quality fingerboard made of ebony wood? What does the bridge look like? Is the bridge straight or is it is it bent like a banana? Is the base in good condition? Does it have any cracks or anything? One note about cracks. If the base has cracks that have been repaired professionally, then cracks are not basically a problem. But these, if these cracks haven't been repaired or if they have been badly repaired by somebody non-professional using maybe the wrong type of glue, maybe the base works on the day you buy it, maybe it sounds okay, but on the long run these badly made repairs will be a problem. After having checked the bass optically, I will check the sound of the bass. One of the important things that I'm looking for is that the bass sounds even 
uh, throughout the whole range of the bass. You don't want a bass that sounds fantastic on, uh, on this range, but then it sounds totally thin on the upper register or on the low register. Very important point. You want all the notes to sound healthy and uh, not to have some holes in the range of your bass. And then, then the next thing that I will check is the playability of the bass. Is the bass comfortable to play? Uh, is the setup well done? Of course, regarding these points, you can do something about it. If the action is too high, you can do something about it. If it's too low, you can also do something about it. But in some cases, it will be more expensive than getting a too high action lower. But what I want to say is, of course, you can improve the playability and the setup of the bass, but this will cost some money. So let's say you take a look at the bass, which should cost uh, 2000 euro, but you have to invest things to have a better setup. You can quickly uh, add a thousand euro if you have to have a new bridge and uh, may maybe have some work on the fingerboard uh, and on the nut have some new strings. This all costs a lot of money. Talking about strings, as you probably know, I have been spending a lot of uh, time to analyze and test different types of strings. If you don't know about this, check my website and check the string metrics where you can compare the sound of different st strings. The link is below in the description. So I, I don't want to talk too long about this now, but what I can say shortly is that the type of strings that you have on a bass has a very big impact on the sound. You may go and check a bass that's for sale that has classical strings on it. And if you're not experienced, you will play this bass and think, oh, this bass has no sustain, bad bass. No, that's wrong. That's only because the strings are not the kind of strings that are adapted to your style of playing. Also here, these are things where an experienced player can tell you, okay, this bass has a little sustain now, but, but still I can hear that it has a very good potential and that the sound is very healthy. In this case, maybe you can ask the seller if it's okay to change the strings and to put uh, strings that are adapted to your style of playing. Or even better, ask the seller if it's okay to take the bass home for a couple of days and maybe also try other strings on that bass. What I didn't talk about too much until now is the look of a bass. Of course, it's important that you like the look of the bass, but you will also encounter some more questions. For instance, this here is a bass with a round back. Uh, there are basses with round backs and basses with flat backs. Basically, a bass with a round back is kind of a more solid construction. So if you have a flat back base, over time you may encounter some problems. You have to have some things fixed more often than with a round back. Sound-wise, there are some differences too between flat back and round back. Go check some forums to see what other people say about this. Here also you can't really say that the one or the other is better. You have to see in each case whether you like the sound of the bass or not. Another thing is the shape of the body. Now here, for instance, I have a bass with a gamba form. This is the, let's say, the, the more normal type of shape. And this bass here has what you call violin corners. It's a shape more like a violin. It looks a little bit more fancy or precious. The very expensive basses more often have this kind of shape than this one. But also here, this doesn't have a real impact on the sound of the bass. And you can't say that a bass with violin corners uh, basically sounds better than a bass with, uh, with the normal gamba shape. A question that comes very often is, what about cheap basses? Basses that cost something like uh, five or 600 euros. Are these basses any good? What I would say is be very careful with those bases. They may sound absolutely okay on the day you buy them, but uh, over time you will probably have some problems. 
One thing is that these bases probably won't have a quality fingerboard. So after some time, the fingerboard will probably have some, some spots where it's not even anymore, where you hear a buzz in the notes. Maybe even the whole neck will not be straight anymore after some time. I've already heard stories like this. And also very important, the whole hardware on these kinds of basses will probably be of very bad quality. So after some time, the tuners won't work properly. The end pin won't hold anymore. Things like that. So at first you pay, let's say, five or six hundred euros. But after one or two years, you will find out that you would have to invest more than thousand euros to get the bass again in a playable condition. So that makes no sense. This is maybe not the rule for every one of those basses. You may be lucky and get a cheap bass that works for a long time. But I would be very, very careful with these kinds of basses. So what's an okay price for a bass? I would say to start with, you can find a first good bass for something around 1,500 to 2,000 euro from a specialized bass retailer. If you are very lucky, you may find a bass of this quality for something around 1,200 to 1,500 euro from private. With this bass, you will have pleasure learning and playing for many years and you can also play your first professional gigs on this kind of a bass. Now, if you are aiming to become a professional player, at some point you will probably want to buy something better, which would be around 3,000 to 6,000 euro. Now, if these prices sound very high in your ears, Keep in mind that this kind of an instrument will keep its value. So if after some time you want to sell it again, either because you want a better bass or because you uh, want to stop playing, you will probably get the money that you paid back. Buying a quality instrument is always a good investment in my opinion. So that's it basically. I hope I could help with these informations. A very important thing, I can't say it enough, if you buy a bass and you're not really experienced with basses, take an experienced player with you to check the bass or find a way to have a professional bass maker check the bass before you buy it. So I wish you good luck with buying a bass. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Also, if somebody notices that there is a point that I missed out in this video, let me know in the, in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. That's always good for my ranking on YouTube and hope to see you again very soon. Bye bye.